welcome to news click with the memorandum of understanding being signed between 8 of the 9 unions of the ufbu and iba and befi refraining itself from signing the union there has been a lot of questions arise among the present and the retired employees of the banks so let us welcome cp krishnan sir joint secretary of the bank employees federation of india to give us insights about what is happening around and why befi has not signed the mou it is not only bank employees federation of india but also many of the signatory unions have expressed displeasure about this mou the common charter of demands was submitted much before the expiry of the 10th bipartite settlement there have been so far 44 rounds of discussions including the one held on 22nd july 2020 like any other settlement this settlement also has been very turbulent seeing lot of agitations demonstrations strikes etc the indian banks association started with a meager offer of 2% increase and after a lot of struggle it has come up to 6% then 8% 10% 12.25% 12.5% and then 15% to make iba commit 15% a lot of struggle has been into after that the question of settling other issues came up the non financial issues also were discussed in the small committee and a broad understanding has been reached on many of these issues in the year 2020 january 13th there was a bilateral discussion in which the iba was very, very adamant and thus the talks broke down a series of strike calls were given on 15th january 2020 2020 january 31st and february 1 two days massive strike was observed by all the unions 10 lakh employees and officers struck work and huge demonstrations took place in almost all the centers and which were strongly supported by the retirees subsequently there was a bilateral discussion on 29 february in which iba came down to agree many of these issues and that is why the strikes that were scheduled in the month of march and the indefinite strike that was proposed on 1st april 2020 were deferred what was the understanding on 29 february on 29 february besides settling all these issues of non financial demands and also 15% increase in the pay slip component the other issues raised by the ubu also were agreed by the iba for instance five days banking they said they will consult the stakeholders and come back in the case of merger of special allowance they said it is open they will work out the cost jointly in the case of loading they said they will definitely consider more than 2% and also work out the cost and also the question of uh, pension revision for the retirees that also they said they will share the data and also they will work out the cost and the talks were very smooth and uh, because of that the subsequent uh, struggle programs were withdrawn but all of a sudden on 22nd july 2020 a memorandum of understanding was signed in which many of the organizations are telling towards ubu convener that they were not consulted properly this is the issue now bfi is professing and propagating the issues that have been commonly agreed by ubu and left out after 29 february what are the issues one if you take the percentage of increase that was settled at 15% even though there is a further scope on pay slip component the pay slip component itself came into existence only from the 10th bipartite settlement up to 9th bipartite settlement the discussion was centered around the overall load but during the 10th bipartite settlement united forum of bank unions thought instead of discussing the overall load 
it can confine itself to payslip component that means the items that are appearing in the payslip like basic da hra cc in the case of officers professional qualification pay special pay etc etc so with the increase under in the payslip quantum with that understanding whatever may be the load that may accrue on account of superannuation benefits irrespective of the load that has to be borne by the iba this was the basic understanding of eobu with that understanding eobu approached iba at the time of crucial time of settlement of 10 bipartite settlement in february 2015 at that time iba came out that they will not agree beyond 2% of loading for the purpose of superannuation benefits with the basic pay this was the bone of contention it was not uh, liked by almost all the unions but they agreed subsequently during the 11th bipartite settlement this has been the first and foremost demand the injustice perpetrated in the 10th bipartite settlement on account of lesser loading up to 2% it has to be rectified in the case of workman it is 7.75% special pay in the case of officers it is 9 10 11% of the basic pay this has to be rectified only if it is rectified the superannuation benefits will have its real benefits and those who retire during this period would get all the benefits this time even though on 29th february iba agreed but finally in the mou this is not finding a place iba has flatly refused to revisit their own commitment of merging the special allowance with the basic pay number 1 number 2 as far as the loading of basic pay is concerned this time also it has been pegged at 2.5% there is a enough scope for merging up to 10% of the uh, loading in the basic pay but it is not agreeable to iba and a memorandum of understanding has been signed without the proper loading this is another important issue of the bank employees movement thirdly fridays banking is the demand of the bank employees for the past more than 7 8 years even during the last bipartite settlement it was uh, originally agreed but later they said uh, first second and uh, fourth saturdays they will uh, give holidays and then they will consider fridays banking and fridays week but that was not happening and uh, the entire money market reserve bank of india share market central government many of the state governments they function only for five days so bank employees and officers also need to maintain work life balance and therefore this is a very dear demand to all the bank employees and fourthly uh, national pension system the management is contributing 14% of the basic and da and the employees are contributing 10% of the basic and da as per the understanding of this memorandum of understanding but there is no definite pension definite benefit the bank employees who are going to retire after some years they do not know what quantum of pension they will get so that is why the bank employees movement has been very clearly propagating demanding and professing that national pension system should be scrapped and all should be brought under the defined benefit scheme and this is one of the foremost and important demands bfi is propagating and the next one is updation of pension from the introduction of pension uh, in the year 1995 with retrospect effect from 1986 there has not been any updation at all and reserve bank of india they have updated central government with every pay commission they are updating the retirees forum in kerala has come out with a very clear statistics that there are enough resources to update the pension but that is not happening and if you are leaving this time it is unlikely to happen next time also because in the 10th bipartite settlement there was a record note in which it has been agreed that it will be discussed but it has never never come for discussion therefore this is another important demand 
and PLI. PLI is one. What is PLI? PLI is performs, performance linked incentive. It is, uh, it is going to differ from bank to bank. Initially it may differ from bank to bank. Later it may differ even from person to person. And it is going to create division. That is why Bank Employees Federation of India is opposing PLI. And family pension. As far as the family pension is concerned, there has been a very good announcement on 22nd July after the MOU by the IBA chairman that it would be considered at par with the central government employees with 30% pay, lost on pay, without any ceiling. That's a welcome step that has to be implemented. These are the vital issues of the bank employees serving as well as retired. These issues will bring a lot of change in the economic status of the employees as well as retirees. And it will also improve the service conditions. But IBA and government are very adamant. They are citing economic constraints, they are citing cost factor as the impediment for settling these issues. This is absolutely unacceptable. During their 10th bipartite settlement, the overall business has improved from 85 lakh crores to 187 lakh crores, 187 lakh crores. And at the same time, the overall profit, the operating profit earned by the bank employees during this period is 6 lakhs 36 thousand crores. The per employee business mix has increased from 19 crores to 27 crores. During this period, 21,000 bank employees have been reduced, whereas 23,000 bank branches have been opened. And therefore, there is a heavy workload and there is enough cost to take care. The adamant attitude of the IBA and the government have to be fought. Only then we will be able to achieve all these demands and that is why Bank Employees Federation of India is very keen to propagate these demands. We seek the support of the employees as well as retirees so that a better life can be ensured and light can be brought in the lives of bank employees serving as well as retired. Hope that your, uh, all your answers have uh, answered many of the uh, questions of the serving as well as retired employees. All your insights into the bipartite settlement, what has been happening so far, has been very good, sir. And thank you for joining with us. Thank you.